<laughs> Hi, so welcome to another episode of uh, BS Talk, and we're driving back from Huntsville, Alabama. Today we're going to talk about uh, differences in locations, just kind of on a general level. Um, so I think one thing that uh, we can both attest to quite well is when it comes to kind of the style of our investigations, we tend to stick with like three things. That's we either do a haunted hotel, a haunted public space that we have access to, whether we've uh, rented that space or we've just been given permission to use the space for an investigation, or um, we've done an outdoor location that has public access. Yeah, yeah. So, like, when we're choosing our places, like, do you even think about the type of location it is when we choose to do it? Um, I guess it, it hadn't really registered until now, like, the different types, what to expect, what do you think is going to go on, um, especially now that we've had the experience of a public place completely to ourselves. Like that, that, you know, that kind of definitely makes me think about it every time we go somewhere. And, you know, so far we're not too good on the outdoor spaces. Not that we're not too good. We haven't had good luck with the outdoor spaces. So, yeah, I, I guess it's never really registered the different types of places what could what couldn't happen what's going to be there you know what I mean yeah I mean, have you ever even thought about it or something? yeah you know like one of my pet projects is a book on haunted hotels and I just yeah. well and it's historic haunted hotels I've been to hotels that are not historic that claim to be haunted yeah. And it's different for me going into those places than it is for me to go into a historic building that's a haunted hotel. Um, but yeah, you know, I do give it a thought um, because not just the size, but also the limitations that are potentially there for a haunted bed and breakfast, a haunted hotel. Um, right. Most hotels have given me open access to the whole hotel. Um, this year, this calendar year, only three hotels have actively limited myself or us yeah. to a single room. Um, so it's, you know, it's cool. I'm renting the room. I normally pick the most haunted room to uh, get. And sometimes I get activity. Sometimes I don't. Um but I have noticed that at some of the hotels I've been to, historic or not, um, I'll go all over the hotel and sometimes I'll find something and sometimes I won't. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, but I, I automatically kind of categorize what the places we do go to, the places we choose. Yeah, and, and I, I guess in a way, if you think of what we're going to be able to do, I have thought of that, you know, like I'm always thinking, Okay, we've got a hotel, so we need to be prepared for if we have full access or just room access. Uh, we need to be prepared for you know people, other people being there, walking around making noises, you know, things See, like that. That was our experience at the Denim House. Was mm -hmm. we could go around the house. It was only two floors. It was it was a limited space, but. While we were downstairs investigating, we still had to keep in mind, yeah, there are still people upstairs. Yeah, there's still people up there walking, talking, doing whatever they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And we try to go, you know, we try to adjust, go a little bit later at night, so there's a less chance of of a guest being awake and, and disturbing everything. So, And we try to take that into account when we're going over evidence and things like that. So, But... You know, especially after this season, this year of investigating, it's definitely going to make me think more about the types of places we go. You know, and, and how to approach it, what to do, how to get it done, you know, things like that. Like, I still enjoy the haunted hotels or bed and breakfast or whatever. And, like, I enjoy the different avenues, the different ways of doing it, the different setups and all that, but... You know, again, we so far we are we, we're pretty sure we're over two on outdoor spaces. <laughs> so, 
and I don't want to shift away from doing outdoor spaces, but I don't know. Maybe, I guess I won't be as excited to do outdoor spaces. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but, and the thing is, is like outdoor not only has the elemental challenge, like today it looks like it's about to start pouring rain, but there's also what we ran into last night, which is we were in a public outdoor space it isn't a private outdoor space it isn't hard to get to it's not difficult terrain it's a playground where people want to take their kids to play and uh so and it's also a tourist spot where people want to go and see if they can see a ghost yeah so we we probably only got like an hour hour and a half worth of investigation time in at the park mm -hmm. um before people started showing up to see if swings moved by themselves and yeah, we had to take down our gear because people showed up. But they have a right to. It's public space. Yeah, we can't tell them, oh, you got to leave. <laughs> so, so that always, you know, make, kind of makes it hard mm -hmm. to, to do a good job, a good investigation. But, you know, again, we can't just stop outdoor spaces. There's too many of them out there we should, we should attempt to do at least, you know. Yeah. So, you know, we got one more outdoor space we're going to attempt to get to if the weather permits. So would you call, like, outdoor spaces your least favorite type of space? Yeah, probably. It's because there's just so many uncontrollables. You know, you can't control weather. You can't control people coming out there if it's a public space. I mean, you can't control the animals. You, know, you just can't control all that stuff. And even as a little bit of control you have in a hotel... At least you don't have to worry about weather, you know, inside a hotel. You don't have to yeah. worry about random animals, you know, making noise or whatever. So, so that, that would probably be why. Um, yeah. Just because you, you get all excited, you go, you get ready. Because I was really excited about the playground this year. And then it turns out a bust because of uncontrollables. And it gets very frustrating. Yeah. Very, very frustrating. Yeah. Um, you know, unless you go to a place like we did last year with the bridge, nobody's going to be out there just because it was really hard to get to. Um, but again, you know, we sat out there for hours and in the heat and the bugs and all that, and, <laughs> and then to get nothing. It's a little, it's a little disappointing, but you know, you got to expect getting nothing. So, yeah, it's probably my least favorite. But I'm like, again, I'm still not going to throw them out. You know, we still got one more outdoor we're going to do. And, yeah, got good hopes on that one. Uh, but, you know, but what what particular setting location would be probably your least favorite? Probably outdoors as well, but not for the same reasons. Okay. Because when you're investigate, like when I investigate, I like to do long investigations. I like to go at it for four or five hours. Right. I really, really do. I, I like it. Um, you can't do that outside bugs, the elements, people, like, various things just interfere. Even just, like, on a hot, sweaty day, yeah. like, it would just be miserable. Right. It's not Absolutely fun. miserable. Yeah. And it's not like we're a huge production team, you know? Like, we, it's two of us. Right. It's you and me. Like, even if, even if there were more of us who could, like, switch out and alternate who's outside doing what I think I would find that a little bit more tolerable than just two people being out there trying to find what they can with a five hour investigation that's just a lot yeah um, I would say my favorite my favorite type of investigation that we've done so far like in terms of general locations is when we've had a space entirely to ourselves Oh, yeah. um, and I'll say, last year, the Dothan Opera House, there was one person there, and there was just one time, one time, we could not prove that a sound that we picked up on audio wasn't him. We had no clue where his whereabouts were when that audio went off. So, like, it, it kind of threw a wrench in, and we come to this realization, well, the whole time we were there, we really didn't know where he was. Right. Right. But... But when we get a location and it's entirely to ourselves, we're locked in this place all night. We do our sweeps. We check around. We look around for anything out of place. 
we know where all the security cameras are, we know what rooms are locked shut, we know what rooms are open, we knew what rooms were closed but unlocked, we knew where everything and everyone was. Yeah. And you start having experiences, you start having things and then you have evidence to corroborate those experiences. Oh yeah. That's what's convincing. Oh yeah. That's the powerful stuff. And I, and I'll even tell you if when, when we did the opera house, if we heard a clear voice of specifically a female entity, I would not have doubted for a second it right. would have been paranormal. Right. Now, that was far from what happened in our experience there. Yeah. yeah. Like, we, we got next to nothing. Right. But at the same time, like, you know... I don't know. I, I guess what I'm saying is if we were in a place where the right event happens in correlation to the situation. So like, let's say I'm doing a haunted hotel. I know there are multiple rooms booked. I know I'm in the most haunted room in the hotel. Mm-hmm. Let's say I can hear everything happening in the rooms around me. Let's just say it. I know the voices, I've heard them. I can still not with 100% accuracy say anything I pick up on audio isn't there, isn't them. Right. But uh, if a ghost popped up right in front of my face, I can't discount that. That's a different story. Yeah. It is, because it's a specifically different situation, so. Yeah. But you're not going to, like, you're not going to be able... You're going to be able to trust less the more people that are involved. Right, right. And, and that's why I agree. The private spaces have been a lot, a lot more fun, a lot easier, a lot better to to investigate. You know, when, mm-hmm. when you have no question at was that somebody else, that that's just always better. And I do like the haunted hotels. I love them. I think they're a lot of fun, but I'm with you. The, the private sectors, the private buildings, areas, whatever, is a whole lot better. You know, maybe we can get you know, get a few more of them in the future. But, uh, but I definitely do enjoy that a lot more. That way, there's no question. You know what I mean? Like, well, and that's what I'm looking forward to this summer. Um, in about six weeks, I'm going to be locked inside of the jail museum in Victor by myself. By myself. Yeah. Um, there is there is a chance I might throw together a Colorado team. Um, just try to get some people out there to join in and, you know, just try to team up on the investigation. But I don't know if six weeks is enough time to build a team dynamic to... You know, really get something positive going. Like, if we've never investigated together, and you know, I'm not gonna lie, I, I would consider it my team. Yeah, I would want things to be done a certain way. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's why I love our dynamic is we know each other well enough, and we've known each other our whole lives. Mm-hmm. We know how we operate, and we work really well together. Absolutely. And so, like... And it makes it easy. It makes it easy. Makes it easy. Like, it, it's going to be hard to, to find that and build that. So, chances are I'm going to be in that museum by myself. Yep. All night. If a ghost pops up in front of me, I will know exactly <laughs> who it is. Yes. Yeah. Like, it, it's not going to be... Or if you hear somebody trying to talk to you. <laughs> huh. Yep. No. So that that's going to be interesting to watch. You know, mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. So hopefully, some good good stuff. Now, I do know there will be an employee on call, but well, that's different. Yeah, I mean, we had an employee on call at the dress too. You know, we did. if we ever needed anything. Uh, so, but I mean, that's safety reasons. You got to have something like that. And I know that there are cameras around the museum to make sure things go right, but yeah, again, safety. 
again, not worried about that, but yeah, um, I guess that's, that's kind of it. That's kind of our take on haunted locations. Again, we've done, we've rented out spaces. We've done, uh, private investigations. We've for free, we've been given access to other buildings. Um, most of our, uh, investigations have been in hotels. It's been in haunted hotels. Yeah. And I will say one perk of a haunted hotel, you don't have to worry about where you're going to nap. That's true. You don't have to worry about where you're going <laughs> to sleep. That's, that is true. It's very true. And yeah, most of them have, have uh, you know, diners inside of them, so you don't have to worry about where you're going to eat either. So. Mm -hmm. so, the hotels are pretty nice. Good accommodations. Good accommodations. So. Yep. Yep, that's it for this week's BS. You know, we're talking about different different locations, different types of locations. So. Yeah, please give us a like, uh, comment, uh, subscribe to our channel for not just more of these episodes of BS Talk, but for some of our paranormal investigations. Go back and watch some of our past ones. I know they're a little raw. They're they're rough. <laughs> we're getting better. As we do this longer, we're getting better. We're getting a lot better. And I'm not even going to say, you know, we're... You know, A and E quality paranormal investigation show on YouTube, but you know we're we're better than we used to be. So, oh yeah, uh, go up back watch some of our old stuff. Uh, look forward to some of the new stuff. We do have stuff coming out all the time. Thanks for watching.